So, so far so good. Our API backend is running as you can see right here on port 8800 slash countries. And our UI is running as well. So if I go to hate it. So API is working and our UI is working as well as you can see right here. What we now want to start doing is to actually grab this data from the API and load it into the UI in a fancy table like this one below. Although there are other tables, but we might use this fancy table right here uh, to load the data coming from the API onto the UI. So the first thing we want to do now is want to fetch this data first and display it on the console. And later on in the next part, we now display it on the table like this. So let's go ahead to get started. There is a kind of step-by-step -step I've made. This for a complete application in uh, product crude application in uh, Angular and Spring Boot, but we can kind of use uh, some things from here. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to create two components, the home component and the countries component. The home component is going to display the home page and the country component is going to display the list of countries coming from the API backend. Again, I'd like to recommend that if you are joining me for the first time, please uh, subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any update from me. All right, so the first thing we want to do now is to create two components, one the home and the second one is a country's component. So the, to create a component, I'm going to use the command nggc, nggc home. And uh, the first one and the second one is nggc country. It should be countries or country. So I think the convention is to use singular, but I can't remember. So uh, country component. So, so we've created the two components, and if you look at this place, they are shown in green right here. So the next thing now is we want to add routing so that when someone visits slash home, it goes to the home component. If one visits slash countries, it goes to the countries component. So I'm going to go to the routing, uh, app routing module, app routing module.ts is going to be this one. So here I'm going to add some routes. Actually, I'm going to just copy and paste so I don't waste precious time. So I'm going to copy this and just paste it there. So what it means is if one goes to slash home, uh, it displays the home component. So it does import for me. And if one goes to slash countries, uh, it displays the country component. And this is going to be, sorry, this is going to be uh, countries. Okay, so this is the routing. We've set up the routing now. Now, if one goes to slash home, so let me save everything. Let me tell you what is going to happen. And then we talk about uh, something else. So if one goes to slash home now, slash home, it displays the home component, okay? So this is like, uh, it goes to slash home, like it displays the home component. And if I go to the home component, we have this home works. Actually, it doesn't display the home component. It displays the original component that was there. So if I go to slash country, you see, it actually does not uh, work. So, what I'm going to do now is we are going to uh, display the home component separately and the country's component separately. So what I'm going to do now is that if I go to the app routing, I'm going to take everything from here. I'm going to take everything from here and use it in the home component because these are items that actually belong to the home component. So I'm going to copy all of this and place it in the home component right here. So what it means is that all these items will now be in the home component. Later on, I'm going to show you how to actually uh, use these items and reuse them again in different components. For now, just know that we place this here. So if I save everything now and go back to check and go to slash countries, it says countries works. So it displays only the countries component. In that if, I, if I go to the home component, it displays the home component. If I also go to slash without entering any component, it displays the home component. This is the expected behavior based on my routing. 
which I set right here. Okay, so this is about routing. We are going to come back to this later on to talk about static and dynamic parts of the page. Uh, so we now want to fetch some data from the API and display it in the UI. Let's follow the procedure. The procedure is right here. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to go down, 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 and go to the part two. Part two, sorry, not you. Okay, so the procedure is right here. So what I'm going to do now, we are going to first add the HTTP client module to the app to the app module. And that is what I have in step one here. Add HTTP client module to the app module. So I'm going to open the app module. App module is this file. I'm going to, in the, the import section, I'm going to add HTTP client module. And this HTTP client module should be coming from, I'm um, going to import it from import HTTP client module. It's going to be from uh, slash um, actually Angular. So just make sure I get it right. Angular slash common uh, slash HTTP. So this is where this module comes from. Okay. Uh, but two now we are going to go to the countries component to actually write the code to fetch the data. Okay. So here is my countries component, and I'm, this part that says create this uh, interface or this uh, model is optional. So I'm going to skip it for now. So I'm going to come here in the constructor, uh, or first I'm going to create a variable here. I'm going to say it's going to be public countries, and it's going to be any type. For now, we don't know what it is, so it's going to be any. Shall we say any like this? And we are going to now say add HTTP variable as a parameter to the constructor. So I'm going to go to the constructor right here, say private, uh, HTTP client, HTTP client, okay? So this is the module, HTTP client module we are going to actually use to make requests uh, to the API to fetch some data. So I'm going to write a function that is called getCountries. So this function is not going to take any parameter and this function will be, will be responsible to fetch some data using the HTTP uh, clients that I uh, specified here. So I'm going to say this.http client.get. So when you say that .get, uh, it's going to return any because for now, we it's just a list of items. We don't know what it is. So it doesn't just be a list of any item. And we want to specify the URL here. So this is the URL. And we want to specify the URL. I'm going to say dot subscribe and okay, perfect. So when you say dot sub subscribe, some response is going to be returned. So I'm going to say a response. That's what is going to be returned. Um, response return. So when a response returns, I'm simply going to console dot log log sorry console the log response okay so let me just display the response in the console and i also like to assign this response to this country variable here so i'm going to say this as country is equal to response now we have gotten this list of countries and we are displaying it on the console and now on init when this application initializes and somebody requests for the countries uh, component, the on init method is going to execute. So in the on init method, we are going to simply call this function get countries that actually does the work. So I'm going to say this of get countries, and this will be it. Okay, I think I have it here. So you have this right here. This is exactly what I did. So let's save everything and let's try to see if it actually works. So I'm saving everything, save everything. And I think the application automatically restarts. So if I now go to uh, this place and say countries, 
I'm going to kind of leave my, uh, okay, so let me say countries, and it says countries work. But now I want to look at the console to see if it actually displays a list of countries. So I'm going to go, I'm going to the console, and it doesn't, so I'm going to refresh the page. Oh, okay, we did not specify the URL, remember? So, so this is the URL. And the URL should be this one. So I'm going to just copy this and use it right here. Okay, so this is the URL specified. So I'm going to save everything and we are going to go back to check uh, in our console right here. So let me clear my console, I'm going to refresh. And now you can see the five items here show that the console, the list of countries was actually retrieved from the API. Now this, all these ones are related to the UI, the uh, template we are downloaded, but we are going to handle it different. And we have the list of countries gotten. Now we have it in Angular in our front end application. Now the next step now is to display these items on a fancy table, uh, on a fancy table. So how do we actually display it on a fancy table like this one shown below. So that's what we are going to be doing in the next class. But before we round up, there's something you need to know because if you don't know this, you will have error. In your uh, node application, your API, you need to allow cross-origin requests. Uh, you want to allow requests coming from outside the uh, API server, as it were. So this, to do that, we are going to simply create a new variable called CORS. CORS means cr uh, cross-origin um, requests. Uh, I can't remember, cross-origin requests or something. And then you have to tell the router, your API router, to use the CORS. But before then, you also need to install npm install CORS. So this is how to do it in the back end. If you don't do it this way, then you are not able to fetch the API from the front end. So this way I'm going to be stopping for now. As I used to say, uh, subscribe to my channel. And also if you have any challenges whatsoever, please do leave me a comment in the comment box below. And we see in the next part. I remain Clinton the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.